I saw footprints, but they were they had like gold glitter on it. Oh, praise God! Just received church. The presence of God is in this place. Yes, Jen. <laughs> Um, I kind of saw what Maureen saw and I was just seeing wave after wave and just getting smashed but with every wave I just saw all of the impurities and imperfections come out the other side of the oh, body so with God. every wave coming we were just being cleaned out with every gentle wave yeah the worship worship was outstanding yeah the presence of God Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, I saw Jesus in, um, in his attire. And it was like in when Mandela started singing Holy, Holy. Um, it was like in that very moment, it wasn't just this house of God. It was like every house of God across the peninsula. It just magnified him in that moment. And then it's like every single sound and every note when you look into that note as you worship God, it's in a worship in itself. Like every chord and every melody and every sound and every note was designed to worship Jesus. Wow. And when you see it as that, every single sound, and that's what was happening here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. I said it's all about Jesus, church. I like that every note, every sound, every melody, it's all about him. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about any denomination. It's all about Jesus. And I, I believe we are getting into an into a awesome place in God. It's not Sunday, last Sunday morning, Sunday night, God just moved unbelievably in this place. Affected this place, affected the city, but... I believe God has been doing and building things for many years, decades in this place. And He's pouring out His Spirit. Not only here, anywhere else around the world, God is pouring His Spirit. We have said it many a time, Dick Rubin said it, when the pattern is right, the glory will fall. But in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And like uh, Jan seen, waves of His power and glory is taking all that impurity right out of your life. You can get set free in the presence of God. Said it many a times, Benny Hinn, all the great powerful ministers, they just worship God for about two or three hours and they come off wheelchairs. Just get into the presence of the living God. Throw yourself into the anointing, into the presence and live in the presence. You don't have to do anything. Just absorb. Get soaked in His presence. Practice the presence of God doesn't come just like that. We want deliverance, healing, set me free, pray for me, get my demons out. I'll get married, have, it, have three children and live happily ever after. Not me, I'm talking about generally. It never happens, amen. There is a process that we all have to go through. Don't fight it. Praise God. Okay, can we, anyone else quickly or, we, or anyone on Zoom or we'll take communion? All right, you want to stand up, please? This scripture, the familiar scripture keeps coming to me. God so loved the world, John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him, not heard the story, but whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. And when I see eternal life, eternity is healed, delivered, protected, preserved, and made whole, complete. But those who believe in Him, not heard a story about Him, and recite the story and write a book about Him, but those who know Him. Many a times you have heard it. It's not knowing the Bible, but knowing the author of the Bible. Those who know Him. And for God to say that He, you know, his word, he, he loved the world so much. That means he loved you and me and everyone because he created the whole lot. He gave his only begotten son 
So he took sin and he put it on his own son, watched his son, and his son was so obedient because he said, I will not do anything unless the father tells me. He was so obedient, but God, he who knew no sin, took my sin. God so loved the world, he he who knew no sin took my sin and took my diseases on Calvary. So when we take communion, we're acknowledging that he took every sickness, every disease, because God so loved the world that he gave his son who was totally obedient to him and loved him so much that he, he gave everything to the Father. He never said anything or went anywhere unless the Father, he was directed by the Father. So he, without sin, took your sin. I'll go a bit deeper. Before you even sinned, he took the sin on Calvary because he was crucified before the foundation of the world. That's how much you need to love him with all your heart, with all your mind and all your soul. He took every sickness, every disease, every sin, every fear, every judgment. You need to be judged for every sin you have committed. But the time he took it, 2,000 years ago, he took your judgment and nailed it on Calvary. Church, it's hard sometimes to receive what Jesus has done. Do you know, he also became poor that you will be rich. I'm talking to somebody here today. He took sickness that you will walk in healing. He took your sin that you are today righteous in God because whoever believed in him, there are some listening to me, I've never heard this before. If you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died and took your sin, your sickness, your disease, your poverty, your lack, by faith you are saved, delivered and set free. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am redeemed and I know I am. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, saved from sin and I know I am. All my sins are taken away, praise the Lord, hallelujah, on Calvary. Jesus suffered for me. Jesus suffered for me. He, broke he broke sin's curse. And he set me free. And he set me free. On Calvary, Jesus suffered for me. He broke sin's curse and he set me free. All my sins are taken away. Praise the Lord. All you got to do is just, just believe. Thank you, Lord. Just believe what you have done when you're holding this bread. He is the bread of hope. He is the bread of life. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh and took your sin, your sickness, your disease by faith. Right now, come in agreement, church. If two or more come in agreement, that foul spirit of sickness and disease cannot stay in your body. That sin cannot stay in your body. Nothing can remain in that in your body. Just believe by faith that it's already done on Calvary as we eat and drink together in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I am redeemed. Hallelujah. Keep on saying it, church. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. so keep on saying it. Amen. If you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth, you are delivered. You are set free. The Greek word is zozo. Healed, delivered, protected, preserved, and made whole. Start walking, thinking, confessing, and believing that it is already done on Calvary 2,000 years ago. Keep talking to yourself. Somebody will hear you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, don't forget the transformation meeting. Eli, you got something? Want to come forward?
Ella has got something show and tell. They want the mic, do they need? Yeah. I'll get this mic here. Yeah, we'll collect the tithes and offerings. Get ready to give to the Lord, please. Just wait a minute there, Bob, and then I'll pray for the tithes and offerings before we collect it. Okay, Allah, I want everybody to watch this. Amen. Good morning. This is what I did for show and tell. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with me. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that. You're my God, you're all together, lovely, all together, worthy, all together, wonderful to me. Joshua 1, 8. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you'll be sh sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Mm -hmm. My favorite, my favorite nighttime activity is Bible study, which occurs every second Saturday of the month. We begin. I've been going to my church a lot of the breakthrough since I was born. My pastors' names are Ainsley and Yara Graham. However, Bible study is led by our teacher, Norm Hallett. We begin Bible study with praise and worship. My church welcomes the children to sing and dance at the front. We then study a particular scripture and end with lots of questions and discussions. I prepare for Bible study by attending the worship practice. Sometimes we have pizza and movie nights. This year, we're planning on making winter packs for the homeless and including things like toothbrushes, toothpaste, and other winter warmers. I like going to Bible study because I get to have fun, see my friends, and learn more about God. I like to end by saying one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 1 verse 3. Are the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or join with mockers or stand around with sinners. They delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit every season, and their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ella, Ella shared this, um, um, you know, at, the, at one of the prayer meetings and she went to school. And I believe God is going to do something mightily in Allah's life in Miller College. God is going to use it or wherever she goes, any college she goes to, she's going to transform the place because she's carrying an anointing. And this is what's happening in the Transformation Media Church. In the last two years, this Mandela has been switching on every day in the morning in the transformation meetings and uh, you can see the glory of God is pouring upon the children. Uh, God, God is a God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That is your children, your children's children forever. You know, it doesn't matter what your children are doing right at the moment, you just serve the Lord. Mandela just pour out a heart to the Lord every day at six o'clock in the morning and these are the results. A whole generation is being transformed and she's She's actually another generation. She's affecting another generation. You could see the power of God in that little child out of the mouth of babes. You want another message? You got your message already in the morning. <laughs> you already got your message. Meditate on his word day and night. You will be prosperous and successful. It's just coming out of and Psalms 1. You know, you need to be planted by the river, not somewhere else. Don't be planted in one place and in another place and in another place. Planted in one place. You, you bloom where you're planted. Amen? 
So have you collected the tithes and offerings? And if you love this place and love what's happening in this place, you, your heart will be in this place and where your heart is, that's where your money will be. Amen? Amen. And God will prosper you. Continue to support the church. Many of you, you know, you are being really good stewards and standing with us, mighty pillars and, you know, regularly. That's, that's the reason, church, we could, we could buy five properties here in, in um, uh, recently. For those who don't know, we purchased... Um, 171 Anzac Avenue, which is the entrance from Anzac Avenue as well. So that's the fifth property that recently we purchased because we need a higher ceiling, you know. We need the sound really to be really good because we want to take it into the nation. So whatever you contribute and whatever you do in this place, even a little prayer that you pray for Yara and me, we are taking it to the nations around the world. Yeah, some of Yara's messages have uh, two two thousand people in a few weeks have have listened to one of her messages, you know. And there always there is so God is taking the word into nations around the world. I mean, there are like Philippines, you know. I mean, this this girl Joan, she logs into the prayer meeting at four o'clock in the Philippines for our six o'clock prayer meeting, where the people in our church and in other churches are sleeping. At four o'clock in the morning, she's up in the Philippines because she's in tune with Jesus. Amen. 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 There are others from Fiji and different other places that are in tune on. I've seen Debbie, Debbie is from Melbourne and there's people all over. This, you look at what God had done to Elar and, and Travin and you know, Mandela's family. It's affected people in other states in Australia and connected onto what God is doing in this place. So all your support and everything that you have supported and stood with us and given and stood with us is paying good dividends. We are expanding it. When we first started the church with about six people, you know, there were, uh, there were, there were wounded people, sick people, and I was also wounded. I thought I was perfect, though, you know. Uh, but God took and he's still working on me. Amen. All the, when I got saved, I was moving in unbelievable miracles. They started even calling me Dr. Ainsley because when they come to me, I pray and they get healed. But don't worry, I know who the healer is. I mean, I give him the glory every time I think of him. I bow down my knees and worship the king. Amen. But even in my shortcomings, you know, he, he was there with us. It's a setup of God. I didn't know, Yara and I did not know where we were going when we started the church. But we were just led by faith. We stepped forward. And then God gave us this building. And, you know, and I, I remember then the, we were facing this way because there was a kitchen here and a pool there and so on. There was not much of a church in this place, you know, room. But um, I remember I said that we, are going, we will buy that, that block there and buy this one at the back here and that one there and that one there. Amen. And in 12 years we have purchased five blocks. They're connected together, you know. And, and the value of it has really gone up. Apparently they can build it. Because in front of Redcliffe Hospital, there is, um, there is about four or five, uh, uh, what do you call it, stories? Four or five. What's the word? Stories. Yeah, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. So... Yeah. <laughs> You can build units, you know, that was, that's only two or three blocks away from, from uh, Victoria Avenue, and this is Ashmore Road. So the price of the place have gone up, as you know, recently. So the timing of God first to purchase it, so either we can, there's, there's a lot of options. We can build a, a big shed here or something like that, or build a big church here, or the value of this place can come together and, and we can sell it and build a church somewhere else. So we have been waiting. So pray for us that we will make the right decisions. Uh, we have been making the right decisions, decisions because you can see the fruits of our labor. Amen? Amen? You can see it. Not only that the properties have been flourishing and think God has been doing it, but we are also touching souls in America, in Fiji, in, in other nations around the world, and it's going to increase and multiply till every nation is being touched. If they don't pray, we will pray and they will be touched by our prayers. Amen? People are being touched. I pray for people in America on the phone and they get delivered in their hospital beds. It's not that people in America cannot pray. They can pray because they pray that I know what I know today because I learned from people in America like Joyce Myers and Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagan. Amen? 
but God will use certain people because every, every ministry is different. We got a special ministry in here and we got people who love one another in this place. Love from the heart though. You know? I shared at the prayer meeting, you can come in unity, you can come in unity with, uh, with, with people, but that's not the unity he's looking for. It's a unity that comes from the heart. Because you can come in unity to pray to whatever. I don't want to say, say about denomination, but you can come in unity with some cult, cult, cult things. And they come in unity, but they are not in unity with the Spirit because it's not in line with the Word of God. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, but it's unity from the heart. It's unity from the Spirit. Those who are led by the Spirit of God from the heart are sons and daughters of God. So you come in unity with the Spirit. So you can feed the poor. You can do all the good stuff. You can love somebody. You can, I mean, Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, Pentecostals, they all love their children, don't they? They look at their eyes and say, I love you with all my heart. You touch those children, they'll kill you, man, because they're in love. But the love chapter says you can have all that love. You can speak in tongues in men and angels. You can give all your money to the poor and you can throw your body to the fire. But if you don't have love, you've got nothing. What is he talking about? God. It's true love that comes from the heart. Unity in the heart. So you can know the Bible backwards and write the book and write and preach and uh, build mega churches and you can do everything because the gifts will operate without you can prophesy and preach too because they'll come to Jesus and say, I prophesied in your name because you can't use the name of Jesus. Those who believe with their heart and confess with their mouth, they are saved. So Jesus said, they will come to me. They said, I prophesied in your name. That means I even built churches in your name. And I cast out demons in your name. Jesus said, go away. They are born again, spirit-filled people. That's why they were able to do it. But he said, go away from me because he wants you to love him with all your heart. heart. Amen. So the unity in the spirit is the number one thing that God is working on. So our thing here, you have heard me saying it so many times, get your cup clean. Yes. Amen. I said, get your cup clean. Amen. Then the pure water will come and you love the unlovely people and they will come to you and they will be delivered. Give the Lord a clap. Okay, love, you ready? Wow, awesome words this morning and praise and worship. I love those words about the glory and about going forward and purification. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that you're in, in, in your house in your house. I thank you that you're here with your people. And Father, you just see all the struggles and the battles that different ones are going through. But I thank you that you're going to speak to every one of our hearts this morning. You're going to speak to us, Lord God. I thank you that there's listening ears, there's open ears to hear what you would say this morning and to comfort us and to strength us and to cause us to press on, to cause us to go forward, to cause us to go on in spite of what we're facing this morning. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've entitled this message, I press on. I press on. Paul the Apostle's famous words, I press on. Regardless of where you're at this morning, I press on. There's got to be a determination inside of every one of us that, that whatever is happening in our life, whether it's good or bad, whatever season we find ourselves in, we have to make a determination. I press on. I press on. Ainsley and I have been in ministry for a, a, a quarter of a century now. That's a really, really long time. And we've had more downs than uppers. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and many, many times for many, many years, I would see myself in a pit, in a pit with a few sheep. That can be a pretty hard and discouraging thing. But I had to press on. I had to keep going. I couldn't quit. Cry if you have to, but keep on going forward. Keep on pressing onward, regardless of that doctor's report, regardless of what's happening in your own life, the battles and the struggles in your mind, regardless of what's happening in your family. I press on. Amen. Hallelujah. There's got to be that determination. I press on. If I've been going for more than 25 years, we can all do it. 
Hallelujah. Christ in us, the hope of glory in our hearts. In Psalm 3 verse 1, David says, Lord, how they are increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are saying of me, there is no help for him in God. So I pause and calmly think of that. But you, O Lord, I love that. Regardless of whether the enemy's coming against David, he takes his eyes off his enemies and he says, but you, O God, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. With my voice, I cry to the Lord and he hears and answers me out of his holy hill. So I pause and calmly think of that. I lay down and slept. I awakened again for the Lord sustains me. I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people who have set themselves against me round about. When you have your confidence in the living God, you're not going to be afraid of the enemy that's gathered around about you. Amen. David knew that the glory the Lord was his glory, the glory and the lifter of his head. Maybe you've come here this morning with your head down. I want to tell you this morning that the Lord is the glory and the lifter of your head. Amen. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter how many enemies or foes are surrounding you, how formidable it looks, scaring and frightening. The Lord is there. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. We're going to know who's on the inside of us. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not exempt from, from the enemy coming against us. Many are the afflictions. You look at the life of Paul the Apostle, everything that he went through and what a mighty man of the Spirit he was. Hallelujah. The enemy endeavoured to shake David's confidence in God and to drive him to despair. And how many times when things happen in our own life are we driven to despair where the enemy wants to shake our faith, shake us to the very core. How many times when things happen, when we get a not so good doctor's report, when things happen in our family, when when our financial situation doesn't look good, when we're fearing and and being afraid. The enemy wants to shake your faith this morning. He wants to shake you to the very core. But you've got to know who is your confidence in this morning. Don't put your confidence in the arm of flesh. With them is the arm of flesh, but with us is our God to help us and to fight our battles this morning. Hallelujah. A shield to secure David on all sides. Hallelujah. Because the enemy was all around him. The enemy was all around him. But, but the Lord was David's shield. Hallelujah. To protect him on all sides. How encouraging is that? that we can be confident in our God. Through our God, we shall do valiantly. It is He who treads down our enemies. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. I just love it. Confidence in the living God. (laughs) Amen. We've got to get our eyes off the enemy. Get our eyes off that spirit of fear. Get our eyes off that feeling of abandonment. Get our eyes off thinking, well, no one's ever going to want me. I'm going to be be on the shelf, an old maid or an old guy sitting on the shelf. No one's going to come along and, and, and want me. And, and we can get so desperate in, in our relationship that we'll be saying, God, I'll have any woman, I'll have any man. Just bring them along, Lord. Any bloke will do. I'm just a lonely boy or I'm just a lonely maid. And so we've got to be careful because if we ask, God will say, okay, here. He sees the end from the beginning. We'd be pretty miserable if we all got married to some people had not God intervened and stopped that situation or that relationship from becoming fruitful. We'd be crying. When God blesses you, it should be like Isaac means laughter. If you get an Ishmael, Ishmael will make you cry. Ishmael will make you cry for the rest of your life. You don't want an Ishmael. You want someone that's going to be with you. You don't want to marry someone and wake up in the morning and think, oh my God, what have I done? (laughs) (laughs) Love is blind. Marriage is an eye opener. (laughs) You know, we might think, I found my frill on Blueberry Hill. 
And then all of a sudden, everything comes crashing down. Someone needed to hear that. (laughs) Hallelujah. David in Psalm 51 verse 10, he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right, persevering and steadfast spirit within me. David wasn't asking for promotion. He was talking to God, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. That's what David was focused on. That's what he wanted, a clean heart on the inside. He didn't want the power. He didn't want the promotion. He wanted the clean heart. And that's what you and I need to be looking at in this hour, a clean heart. Because when we go through things, what is on the inside of us? Is there resentment? Is there bitterness? Are we harbouring revenge? What is it on the inside? Because every time we go through something throughout the day, what has attached itself? Are we, are we taking offence? What is it? What is it? David's prayer was creating me a clean heart. A clean heart. And I love it. Creating me a clean heart. And that's what our cry has to be each and every day. Because when we go through battles, when we go through changes in relationships, we can become bitter, we can become angry, we can become defiled. Creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. In Psalm 32 verse 5 out of the Amplified Classic, it says, I acknowledge my sin to you. And my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, continually unfolding the past till all is told. Then you instantly forgave me the guilt and iniquity of my sin. Hallelujah. I love it. Continually unfolding the past till all is told. Amen. It's an ongoing thing, isn't it? It's an ongoing thing. And that's the most important thing is to have a clean heart because if our, if our insides are right, our outside's going to be right. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. It doesn't start from the outside. It starts from the inside. A clean heart. A clean heart. In Matthew 5, 8, it said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They shall see God. The pure in heart. They're the ones that are going to see God. So it's so important that we have a clean heart on the inside. Amen. Taking time, taking time to get our hearts right with people, get our hearts right with God, our relationship, any broken fellowship to get that right. The Greek word pure comes from the Greek word Catharos, which means to clean out. I wonder if we have anything on the inside that needs cleaning out. I press on. Hallelujah. I press on. Dealing with those things along the way. In Matthew 23, 26, it says, First, clean the inside of the cup and of the plate. So the outside may be clean also. Clean the inside of the cup. This might be a new cup. I don't know, but it looks pretty clean to me. Okay, clean cup, clean heart, pure heart. That's what we need to do. Because it can get pretty dirty, can't it? If you don't wash a cup, you keep drinking out of it, it gets pretty grubby. You know, I've got to throw it out or put a bit of a pressure on it. First, clean the inside of the cup and of the plate so that the outside may be clean also. And it's all about the heart, the issues of the heart, getting clean on the inside, forgiving those ones. You know, Paul the Apostle had a lot of battles, but gosh, he was really honest, he was. In Romans chapter 7, verse 18, it goes on to say, For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. 
For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. The evil, I don't want to do it, but this I keep on doing. He was a man that was transparent. He wanted you to know that he had a problem that he was dealing with. The Word of God says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. So Paul the Apostle had a battle. And we've got to make sure that our cup is clean on the inside. Clean, squeaky clean on the inside because it's our heart. Like the song goes, I'm looking into your heart. God's looking right into our heart, into our heart. In Romans 7.24, Paul the Apostle goes on to say, Wretched and miserable man that I am, who will rescue me and set me free from this body of death, this corrupt mortal existence? Thanks be to God for my deliverance through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. He's the answer. Jesus is the answer. He's the solution. And I love what the Passion Translation says because it makes it really simple. I like simple stuff. It goes on to say, what an agonising situation I am in. So who has the power to rescue this miserable man from the unwelcome intruder of sin and death? I give all my thanks to God for His mighty power has finally provided a way out through our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. Hallelujah. Paul the Apostle knew the answer to his dilemma, knew the answer to his battle, knew the answer to his struggle. Hallelujah. I just love the honesty of his heart, how he tells us all. It's so encouraging that even Paul the Apostle was going through battles and struggles. Amen. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, it says, I press toward the gold to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I press toward the gold. Every day we've got to make a decision. We make a choice. I press on. I choose to go on. I choose to press forward regardless of what has happened, regardless of who's with us, who's not with us, who's rejecting us, who's not talking to us. I make a decision to press on. That sounds like a bit of a job when you've got to press you got to press through some situations. You've got to press through some circumstances. Whenever there is a challenge facing you, press on. Press on. Regardless of what is happening, press on. Make a decision that you're not going to be on the sideline, that you're not going to take a back step, that you're going to press on. You're going to break through. You and God are the majority this morning. Hallelujah, making a decision. The King James Version Bible for press says to bear on with force, to continue moving forward in a forceful or steady way. Hallelujah, continue moving forward. Continue moving forward. Hallelujah, glory, amen. And I just love with Jesus, he never, he never sat down and thought, well, that's it. It's been just too hard. It's been too hard what my father has expected of me. I don't want to drink this cup. He didn't say that. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. He got up and he did the will of the father. Jesus laid his life down. No one took it from him. He made a decision to lay his life down for you and I. Yes. Hallelujah. So we need to lay our life down too, don't we? Lay our life down. Be a bridge for someone to cross over to find Jesus. Glory, glory. Pressing on in God. Make that determination. I'm going to press on. I'm not going to break down before I get through the day. I'm going to press on. I'm going to break through. Hallelujah. See, the enemy wants you to quit. The enemy wants you to give up right where you are now. He wants you to think, you know, it's just worthless. It's useless what you're doing, where you're at. You're not going to make it. Hallelujah. But you've got to rise up. There's got to be a tenacity on the inside. You've got to say, I'm rising up. Hallelujah. I'm filled with power by the Spirit of the Lord. Let the
the weak say, I am strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Make your step count. Make your step count. Hallelujah. The devil doesn't want you to do that, but there's got to be that determination on the inside of you. I don't care how old you are, whether you're old and grey, make your step count. Every step that you take, glory, glory, pressing on in God. You know, there's some, some difficult decisions some of us have to make. And there's some things that nobody can help us but God. But God. I'm just sensing that there's some people at the crossroads and your decision is going to come from God. Because what we find if we run to this one, we run to that one, we get on the phone to that one, we we put an email out to that one and we're going to be so confused, you're not going to know if you're Arthur or Martha. (laughs) So there's some things that we just need to go to God. We need to go to God and get clarity from Him. Hallelujah. This was a really distressing situation that Daniel found himself in. It's in Daniel chapter 2, verse 13. It talks about that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream for which he demanded not only the interpretation but the contents of the dream and his own men were not able to tell him the dream or the meaning. So he's pretty aggro. So it says, so the decree went forth that the wise men were to be killed and the officers saw Daniel and his companions to be slain. Then Daniel returned an answer which was full of prudence and wisdom to Arioch, the captain or executioner of the king's guard who had gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. Daniel wasn't going to get out of this or his three friends. And there are answers that you need that only God can provide. Daniel couldn't be running around town with his friends saying, can you tell me what the the king's dream was about? Can you tell me the interpretation? He had to go to God. See, God had the answer for Daniel's dilemma. God had the answer. It was no good running around town asking anybody because nobody could tell you. Nobody could tell you. And in Daniel chapter 2, verse 17, then Daniel went to his house. And he made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, his companions. These are not miserable comforters like Job had. This is Daniel's friends. Hallelujah. So he went home and he told his three friends about the situation so that they would desire and request mercy of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his companions should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Daniel had to have the answer. He had to have the interpretation. He had to know what the dream was about. And there's only one person that could help him and that was God. Hallelujah. So I love it when he went home and he told his three friends and they're going to pray about it. Requesting mercy of the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Those whose hope is in the Lord will never be disappointed because God had the answer. And I just love Daniel. He wasn't shaking in his boots. He just went and done the right thing, got his friends together and and sought God to pray about that secret that was going to be revealed. And it says in uh, verse 19, then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. And Daniel answered, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with Him. Wow, what a relief. What a relief. Daniel got his answer. Amen. From God, not from anybody else, not from the telephone, not from running around to everyone here and there. God God answered Daniel. Hallelujah. Their plea with God was intimate peril. They were in. They desired mercy of God regarding this situation that Daniel and his friends might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon, that the righteous may not be destroyed with the wicked. 
Hallelujah. Glory, glory. And it says in Psalm 25 verse 14, that the secret of the sweet, satisfying companionship of the Lord have they who fear, revere and worship Him. And He will show them His covenant and reveal to them its deep inner meaning. That means out of a relationship, out of a real close relationship with the living God, He's going to reveal things to you that you don't know of. In, in Jeremiah, it says, Call unto me and I will show you great and unsearchable things you know not. God's saying, Call unto me. Call unto me. I've got the answer, what you're looking for. I've got that truth. I've got that revelation. Call unto me and I'm going to answer you. I'm going to answer you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Daniel was looking for mercy from the living God. Mercy from God. And I think about blind Bartimaeus when there was throngs of people hanging around Jesus. There was one blind man that's crying out, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. One man wasn't going to miss out. Hallelujah. He was crying out. He had heard about Jesus. There were so many around Jesus. Why didn't they receive the miracle? This one blind man, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, he He kept crying out and the crowd tried to shush him down. Well, he began to cry out louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. He got God's attention. Glory to God. And he could say, once I was blind, but now I see. Amen. Hallelujah. He's seen more of that city than anybody else seen that was around Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Someone that dared to cry out. Someone that didn't worry about the the ones that wanted to silence him. Hallelujah. How loud is your cry? Can the enemy silence your cry? Blind Bartimaeus cried out, glory to God. He wasn't going to miss out on his miracle. Jesus was coming past that place. It was the end, coming to the end of there. And all the people that was with him, no one else got a miracle. But one man, hallelujah, saw more that that day than anyone else did. Glory, glory. One man because he cried out. Hallelujah. Daniel's prayer in 2.23, he says, I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known to me now what we desired of you. For you have made known to us the solution to the king's problem. Hallelujah. I press on. I press on. There's got to be determination. I press on regardless what's happening, what's not happening in your life. Pressing on in the things of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it says, We are like common clay pots that carry this glorious treasure within so that the extraordinary overflow of power will be seen as God's, not ours. I love it. That extraordinary power will be seen as God's, not ours. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Daniel 2.28 says, But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. There is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. Glory, glory. You want something revealed to you? There's a God in heaven, hallelujah, that reveals secrets. I cried unto the Lord with my voice and He heard me out of His holy hill. I cried unto the Lord, hallelujah, to see you, Bill, crying out to to God and He's going to give you revelation, revelation. I just see the Lord opening up your spiritual eyes and you're going to see farther afield. You're going to see further. God is going to give you revelation. And I just see you coming alongside. It's like a Barnabas spirit, a Barnabas anointing upon you. You're such an encourager. You just come with that gentleness alongside and you can bring correction and they don't even know they're being corrected because you're coming there like the gentle giant alongside and you're 
dropping encouragement into their hearts, into their spirit. You're a man of the Word and God is going to give you a, a deeper revelation of truth, a deeper revelation. You're a man that's pressed, pressed through. You're a man that's pushed in there regardless of what was happening or what was not happening. I just see God's lifting you up higher this day and promotion is coming to you in the Spirit. And I just see promotion is going to come to you in the workplace. Hallelujah. You're a man of integrity and God is going to lift you up. He's going to lift you up and He's going to bless you mightily. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. It says the effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. I just love it. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we're going through the fire, when we're tried and tested, Amen. That we don't quit. We don't throw the towel in. But when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let there be something on the inside of you that never quits, that, that's determined to go all the way with our God. Amen. Glory, glory. Regardless of what season you find yourself in, press in there with God. Press in there with God. Hallelujah. And Estelle, I just see you're, you're just such a woman of God. You're just such a woman of God. I just see you many times like Mary of old. You come in the presence of God and you're just casting all your cares, all your burdens upon the Lord. <clears throat> and He's just lifting all the weight, all the pressure, <clears throat> all the burdens that have just come upon you. And at times those burdens just want to weigh you down. But I just see the Lord lifting it off of you. He's refreshing you. You're going to run and not grow weary. You're going to walk and not faint. Just see God bringing you into a new place in Him. And it's like, I just see you looking through this window, but the window hasn't been clear. I just see as you keep on praying, God is going to clear that situation. He's going to give you such a clarity and you're going to have a knowing and your confidence is going to be in the living God. You see, things are going to fall into place for you because God's plan is to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And Estelle, all things are working out together for good to those that love God. All things are working out, fitting into a plan, hallelujah, that God has for you. And Debbie Jones, I just see that the Lord's lifting you up. He's giving you that inner strength on the inside. And I just see a fire, a power, an anointing. And you're going to just lay hands on different members of your family. You're just going to know that God is with you. He's going to give you that revelation. He's going to give you that word of encouragement. He's going to give you that word of hope. And you're going to just see your family turning and changing. It's like your family, members of your family. You're going to see your children, uh, new doors opening for them. And they're going to walk through those doors. And you're going to know that God has heard you. It's been a battle. It's been a season where the wind is adversity has been blowing against you, but you have stood the test of time and God is just going to lift you up and He's going to promote you. And there's new things that are on the agenda, new things. And I just see God pouring out financial blessing. And as you're at the crossroads, you're going to hear the direction that God has for you. And He's going to lead and guide you by His Spirit. And He's going to fulfil your heart with a new song and a new peace and a new joy. You're going to see changes in your husband. You've cried out many times to God for him. You're going to see changes. God has heard your prayers as a wife. He's heard your prayers as a mother. He's heard your prayers as a daughter of the Most High God. Hallelujah. God is with you. God is with you. Glory, glory to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Warren and Sue, there's, there's greater miracles that God is going to do. There's greater restoration that God is going to do in your lives. Hallelujah. It's like I just see uh, in Isaiah that Scripture comes to me. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past for I am doing a new thing. I just see that uh, new chapter in your life and it's like uh, the, the page being turned in the book. And it, the uh, don't dwell on the past, that's like the, the in the other season. But this is a new season that you are in now. God is doing a new thing. And you're going to see families, restoration, restoration. Just see walls of Jericho coming down, coming down. Those ones that have wounded you and hurt you and betrayed you. God is going to bring restoration and He's going to just comfort you, Warren and Sue, comforting His love, His, His restoration power. And He's going to do exceedingly, 
abundantly above, beyond what you would even dream or ask or think of. God is going to do mighty things on your behalf. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Terry and Chichi and Lauren, to see the Lord wants you to know that there's a special blessing that He's got for you. There's a special blessing. I just see the word faithfulness over your lives. Faithfulness and God is going to pour His blessing out upon you. Just see blessings in the natural and blessings in the Spirit. It's like I just see your lives. You've knocked, you've asked, you've sought the Lord and the answers are going to come from Him. God is faithful to every one of His promises. There's been many seasons that you've walked through that it's been hard. Many seasons when you felt alone that nobody understood you. Many seasons, but God's bringing you into a new place, a breakthrough where you're going to just rejoice, where you're going to see the victory and the power of God. Hallelujah. And God is going to give you the desire of your heart. There's some new things that are coming your way. It's like stand back, get ready, get ready, get ready because God's getting ready, hallelujah, to open up the voltage of blessing for you. Glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mighty, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, Barry, I just see you with the sword of the Spirit and it's like you're cutting these Goliaths' heads off, not only for your, for your own life, but you're cutting the Goliaths' heads off, the lives of other people. It's like there's people that have just gone through misery after misery and it's like enough is enough. And I just see like a holy anger on the inside of you and you're gonna be pick up that sword and you're gonna just cut those Goliaths' heads off because that authority on the inside of you, hallelujah, it's just gonna get so stirred up and you're gonna rise up and you're going to see breakthrough and restoration in family relationship. God is going to open up your eyes and you're going to see things and you're going to just sense and have a knowing in the Spirit that God has gone before you and that He's working mightily in family relationships, that God is doing awesome things. Hallelujah. You're just going to know that you're going to know. God is going to give you the desire of your heart, Barry, and you're going to see breakthrough. At times you feel like you're going up the hill and it's pretty steep and it's pretty hard. But keep on going, keep on pressing, hallelujah, because you're nearly there, Gl glory to God. You're going to see awesome breakthrough and, and God is going to answer the cries of your heart because they have reached God's ear. He is faithful to every one of His promises. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory to Your Name. Thank You, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just see, uh, Shannon, the Lord says, Son, keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on me. Don't look at the waves and the wind. Keep your eyes on me. Hallelujah. I'm going to take you up higher. I'm going to take you up further. And I just see like a ladder that you're climbing up the ladder. You don't have to look to the left or the right. You just keep your eyes on God. And He's going to fulfil His purposes for you. He's going to raise you up. I just see the Lord raising you up. Even though the winds of adversity are blowing around about you. The, the Lord says, Son, keep going forth. Keep stepping forward. Keep taking that step. Keep pressing on. I, I've got everything that you have need of. I have everything. I have answers to those dilemmas. I have breakthroughs for the things that you are going through. And I just see that God is going to give you the victory. He's going to give you the victory. And you're going to find a, a new uh, freedom in the things of the Spirit. You're going to find a new freedom. And God is going to unleash His power in a new way in your life. Hallelujah. You're just going to open up your mouth. There's oracles that are going to come forth out of your mouth as you open up your mouth. You're going to see oracles flowing out. Hallelujah. And God is going to use you. I just see He's going to use you around people, people that are just so down, that have lost hope. You're just going to come along and it's like your words of hope are going to begin to lift up their spirit. Your words of hope are going to touch them in a new way. You're just going to know the power and the fire of God and the new thing. I just see God's doing something new in your life right now. A new thing. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank You, Lord. Glory to Your Name. Thank You, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Lord, I just see the Lord's wrapped His loving arms around about you. Hallelujah. Here's your strength and here's your friend. What a friend I have in Jesus. And you've seen the power of God. You've seen the restoration hand of God. You've seen some awesome things. But God says, daughter, get ready, get ready, get ready. For I have new things on the agenda. I have new things of healing, a restoration and even a relationship in a far greater way. And, and, and God wants you to know that He's going to break through. He's going to break through on your behalf. 
behalf. He's going to break through even into the hardened of hearts. I just see the Lord taking that hard heart and he's, uh, that callous heart and He's going to just cause it to be soft. He's going to cause there to be a change in that hard heart. And you're just going to know that God has heard your prayers. He has answered your prayers. There is going to come a reunion. There is going to come a restoration. And you're just going to know that God is, is just got your heart's desire in hand. You're going to see the awesomeness of God. You're going to see miracle power. Glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. God is in this place. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And Steve and I just see, see you're looking into the Word of God. You're just looking into the Word of God. I just see you're going to meditate. There's some Scriptures you're going to begin to meditate on and it's just going to speak to you. God is going to give you that, that Logos Word and it's going to become a Rima Word to you, to your spirit. It's going to be something that's going to cause you to put to have a spring in your step. God is going to cause your, your steps to go farther afield. And I just see the Word of Knowledge coming forth out of you, even in the workplace, even around about those men. You're going to open up your mouth and God is going to say, listen, I've got the Word that that man needs and you're going to speak it out and they're going to think, how did you know this about me? And I just see a new boldness coming into you. There's people that are going to come around about you and they're going to befriend you and you're just going to know, God, this is you. This is you. Just see everything that God has downloaded to you over the many years. You're going to begin to start bringing those words up. You're going to start to impart those words into the life of people. I just see even laying hands on family, on loved ones and beginning to believe God's Word. Have faith in God's Word and you're going to see things turn around. You're going to see faith arising in your heart like never before. I just see it's a fresh wind, a second wind of the Spirit that God is giving you and you're going to run Rise up to the occasion. You're going to break through. You're going to step into that place. I just see like a man of the house, man of authority. You're going to declare what God's Word says. And it's like Paul the Apostle, when he was on that ship, he began to declare the Word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And all those men were blessed because of one man. And I just see people around about you are going to be blessed because of you, because of who you are, because of your standing God, your faithfulness in God. Just see the Word becoming alive on the inside of you and God is going to take you further than what you've ever dreamed of and He's going to perfect the things that are concerning you. There's some things concerning you right now. God is going to perfect those things and you are going to see the power and the fire of God. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank You for every man, every woman, every girl, every boy on Zoom in this place, Father God, and that You will just touch them, that You will restore them, Father God, that You will set them free, set them free from the battles, Lord God, like Paul the Apostle said, the things I don't want to do, this I keep on doing. Father, I just pray right now, Lord God, that all that anger and retaliation, Lord God, that You will come by Your Spirit, Lord God, and there'll be a cleansing of the house, the cleansing of the house. Lord God, oh, that You will come and Your precious blood will wash away, Lord God, all that contamination, all that guilt, Lord God, all that resentment, all that bitterness, all that anger, Lord God, that You will come and there will be a clean cup on the inside of every one of us this morning, Lord God, that You would create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, Father God. Lord, today, set people free. Set people free where they're struggling today. I come against the power of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus and I bind you and I break your power and your hold in the name of Jesus and I thank you Lord that judgment judgment begins in the house of God in the house of God that today Lord God we put aside all Lord God the Lord indifferences we put it aside Lord God oh Lord because Lord we want this place we want to come in agreement in unity because where there's unity that's where you command a blessing even life forevermore so Lord I just thank you now that you heal hearts you heal hearts Lord God, and you heal emotions where there's been disappointment, where there's been hearts that have been wounded deeply, that you'll pour your healing balm and you'll heal, Lord God, those hearts, those emotions that have been wounded in relationships, in relationships that you would bring healing, Lord God, in, in our immediate family, in church family, relationships, Lord God, that you would bring healing in broken hearts this morning. And we declare that you are an a, a awesome miracle working God. And Father, today we declare we will press on. We will press on. Thank you for coming this morning. Hallelujah. Have an awesome day.